Hey guys, so a bit of a different video today. I thought I'd do sort of a live update on thinking about selling a stock. So um, I do hold ASOS in the uh, Invest account and the more I look at it, uh, I'm starting to wonder why I do. Uh, so I'm actually down about 50, 45, 50% um, because I bought this sort of back in the 30 odd pound range but <laughs> yeah you look at the uh, one year chart it doesn't exactly look great uh, sort of bought this in partly in the 35 pounds and then sort of averaged down a little in the 30 pounds because uh, I thought sort of the world would be opening up and we'd be sort of getting more towards fashion purchases and sort of low cost clothing uh, the sort of younger population seemed to I like this sort of stuff, uh, a bit strapped for cash, so they, uh, they like some of this, um, but hadn't sort of seen the uh, inflation lasting quite this long, and sort of probably continuing into the future, so I've sort of mentioned before, um, what is a, a low margin business ends up as a sort of next to no margin business very quickly, uh, with sort of rising shipping costs and even small rises in material costs and that sort of thing uh, would question whether they have uh, pricing power to sort of increase their prices with sort of multiple uh, competition even sort of in in their sort of fast cheap fashion sector from uh, sort of boohoo and uh, looking at shine so yeah so I'm 50% down um, but I do sort of make the point fairly often to sort of not anchor onto the sort of price that you paid so just because you bought at 35 pounds sort of thinking I'll hold until it goes green again is a comment that you see quite often um, there's no reason that it has to go back to 35 pounds 30 pounds or 60 pound as it was before um, it's forward-looking stock uh, investors will be forward-looking so will institutions and uh, yeah we'll uh, we'll go off those sort of future projections and um, there are actually quite a few analysts on um, on Yahoo for ASOS so 27 analysts um, this year they're predicting sort of uh, 80 pence in earnings next year um, one pound nine so even off next year's earnings um, I sort of normally look at forward PE which would be a 20 which is not great um, but you sort of accept that it's uh, a bit of a rough year with inflation and sort of pandemic obviously um, but yeah next year even they're sort of predicting one pound nine so it gives you a 15 um, one year forward PE so it's just not all that great and um, sort of three percent net margin for the last year um, and there was an article come out about their upcoming earnings on uh, city index so they're due to report half year earnings on april the 12th um i would you know you have to take some of these articles with a grain of salt really but uh, it does seem to Sort of agree broadly with uh, with the analysts on Yahoo and sort of various other analysts and sort of what you would expect really with uh, inflation as it is. So because they had a, a good year last year, um, they're expecting only 3.2 percent revenue growth um, for the year on year from first half last year. So two billion in revenue. Uh, is the first time they've topped two billion? Fair enough, but uh, not if you're making uh, little profit on it, doesn't matter a huge amount. Um, so yeah, some of the other things that I've noticed: gross margin tightening to 42%. That was sort of over 50 at one point uh, a few years back, and it's been trailing down ever since. Um, Pre-tax profit expected to plunge to 8.7 million, so that's for half a year. So, you know, not necessarily. Obviously, they're expecting uh, a better 
second half of the year if inflation is to subside but sort of if you took that uh, annualized over the year then you're looking at 16 million net profit or pre-tax profit even so you'd have tax to deduct off that as well um yeah so you're looking at a hundred forward pe which uh, is not good at all um should deliver much stronger performance in the second half of the year as tough comparatives start to fall away but i would still not really be comparing it just looking at what they are earning which isn't a whole amount a whole lot um, various com you know countries sort of they break down their revenue into countries sort of some are growing some aren't um, but yeah full year sort of will be under the spotlight as they say um, pre-tax profit they're expecting between 110 million and 140 which just seems a little bit optimistic and 190 million uh, in the last year um, but yeah it's not a lot and this sort of strike me so the long-term goal is 7 billion in annual revenue in about three or four years so maybe 2025 or 2026 revenue and uh, they're expecting EBIT margin to drop from 5.3% which is not a lot to 4% um, as they're spending a lot on marketing to sort of get the demand to get to 7 billion in revenue um, and this of course is uh, interest before interest so they do have some debt and before tax so net margin is even less than 4% um, just sort of looking at their balance sheets so I believe they took on some debt quite recently so obviously this is going back to August um, they'll, uh, they'll have their first half sort of up to February this year uh, balance sheet out shortly but I wouldn't imagine they've been paying down a great deal of debt in uh, times as they are so current debt has been sort of up and down but is uh, is very little but they took out 460 million in uh, long-term debt sort of in the last year or in the last uh, reporting period so they might have paid this off. Uh, I haven't seen anything to indicate they would be. And uh, as I say, with sort of inflationary pressures, uh, I don't think they've had the income to be sort of paying this off. Um, it's not a company that I delve into loads and loads, but uh, that doesn't sort of fill me with confidence. So, yeah, four uh, percent interest before in, uh, earnings before interest. Still going to be paying interest on this uh, on this debt maybe they want to take more debt on to grow this revenue to seven billion um so i kind of think uh seven billion if we said three percent net margin you know you're looking at 210 million on a 1.6 billion market cap so you're paying eight times the potential 2025 earnings today which is crazy from what i would see um so yeah that is uh, sort of partly the uh, the thinking when i think i could just be taking the loss and sort of putting this into someone like imax been coming down recently uh, i would say fairly irrationally um look at some of the i did sort of my semiconductors video and sort of mentioned a little bit of their uh, their growth prospects seem to be growing fairly healthily uh 28 so it's nearly uh you know what eight times the profit margin of uh, asos which is pretty good return on assets and equity both uh both reasonably higher if i remember correctly yes very very much higher and obviously uh, balance sheet wise an awful lot better so total liabilities 
yeah, so current debt, 162 million. Uh, long term debt, very little. So 200 million in debt overall with cash of 360 million. And this is growing at quite a rate. If you look on the quarterly as well, this is going up fairly steadily as their, uh, their profits are increasing. So at that sort of margin, should, in theory, have uh, cash increasing and uh, the debt will seem much, much less. So, yeah, I'm uh, not entirely sure whether I'd be selling this, uh, selling ASOS for either HiMax or possibly Stellantis, possibly something else, but, uh, yeah, every uh, everything I look at just sort of looks worse, to be honest. Um look at sort of the percentage of holders so there is a decent amount held by insiders which is quite nice um, quite a lot already held by institutions um, sort of 77 percent of the float uh, where HiMax is sort of quite a bit held by so it's more held by insiders but then less held by institutions so we've got very little um, of the sort of big firms invested in them really Morgan Stanley a, a tiny amount uh, some sort of asset management firms not a huge amount and they're not in the sort of thematic ETFs so you know, sort of iShares semiconductors and that sort of thing I think if they can sort of grow their uh, grow their earnings and sort of grow the company could potentially uh, have a small position added to ETFs like that. So that sort of gets you automatic, um, you know, formulaic buying, basically. They would just buy it as the, um, as the price increases. So that's a sort of potential catalyst where sort of ASOS, it, uh, it already is quite largely, you know, if you combine the insiders and institutions, there isn't sort of a, a huge amount for um, growth in institutional buying. So the growth would come from the public, which uh, I'm not all that keen on. So, yeah, that's my sort of overview, if you like, on why I'm thinking of selling them. Um, also look at competition. Um, sort of, I know a lot of... Uh, Boohoo investors and sort of ASOS investors are looking at uh, Shine, this new uh, sort of competitor. Uh, I think they do quite a lot in Europe as well. Um, they're sort of a, from what I gather, uh, shipping clothes in from China rather than sort of making them in Britain. Uh, so delivery times are a little bit longer, but potentially sort of cheaper cost. Um, and yeah, obviously you look at the website, it's just absolute barrage of offers. Um, but they are sort of looking to, from the looks of it, spread the word. Sort of pop-up stores and that sort of thing. Covent Garden, London. Seems uh, that would be quite nice for the locals. So, yeah, you've got, you know, even for ASOS, you've got Boohoo, you've got, uh, you've got Shine, and obviously you've got all the old old companies as well, your sort of cheap uh, physical stores like Primark um, and yeah, all you can buy sort of from the brands themselves these days so yeah, if they are, I mean I'll, I'm not going to, probably not going to wait until um, the earnings come out, but yeah, if you are looking at sort of 8 million um, net margin pretty much sort of, as I say could be looking at 100 forward PE, even if it is only temporary, with sort of uh, a 15 to 20 um, slightly longer term. So, yeah, it don't look good. Uh, I think this is probably going today. So, yeah, that was uh, interesting to look at. So, yeah, leave your thoughts in the comments below and like and subscribe. See you soon.